Good morning, friends. It's Monday, May 29th, 2023, Memorial Day. Welcome to my gardens. Before we dive into the gardens, I wanted to show you, of course, the little free library we built a couple years ago. Some dude took a bunch of books recently, it's being used. And I'm putting out a big watering bowl for the doggos this year. People have really enjoyed that. We're going to break up this garden tour into the vegetable garden, orchard, and then three flower beds. So timestamps down below if you don't care about anything. Otherwise, let's dive right in. These days, I'm up every morning at five o'clock when my alarm goes off usually out here by 20 after 5 after I crawl out of bed get myself dressed and uh, start the coffee feed the dog right so we are watering in the garden let's take a look perennials fantastic right take a look the gooseberry of course has been established for a couple years and I thinned it out wonderfully this will be ready to harvest in another month and the currants both of them are actually mature this doubled in size last year and just check out I mean, the volume on here, it's loaded. Both of them really quite spectacular. So that'll be exciting. The raspberries came back with a vengeance, wonderfully so. We're going to have spring fruit on the standard um, red kind. And then over here, this is the black jewel. This is loaded. Actually, this kind of really took over in a flat way. Squashing out some of the stuff underneath, but we'll live with it for a year. The rhubarb, again, absolutely massive. This fall, I'm going to split it. It's the age of splitting. And I was going to take this out this year. This is my first raspberry trellis from eight years ago or whatever. And uh, last year, I didn't get any raspberries growing underneath. So I did a lot of individual picking. And it looks like they're coming up just fine without weeds in between. So these will grow all the way through, easy peasy, and we'll get a nice fall crop from it. All in time for this fall, I intend to pull this up and rotate it 90 degrees to continue that all the way into the corner. And then as we're splitting these, I'll just dig up the back rhubarb entirely, plop one probably over here, and then maybe some other bushes over there. Fun thoughts. I put in a compost stage this year. I'm turning it every Wednesday and Saturday, and I am uh, mixing it, oh yes, watering it every single day. I repainted the potting bench. Let's go uh, box by box. Here with Garden Frog, we have two different kinds of summer squash, and these are the Egyptian walking onions over here. Right below me here, this is the messiest bed because I'm trying to establish carrots. And they were supposed to be in nice vertical rows this year, but it's hard to tell them between all the junk, right? Carrots coming up here, carrots coming up here. So I think in another couple of days, I'll pull all the other random stuff that's growing. Turning around, yeah, my strawberry and asparagus bed looks terrible because last fall I didn't get to clean it up. So all the runners from the beds that left over, I didn't do anything. So all my strawberries are actually growing outside both areas of the bed. So after the fruiting is done and the runners start, I'll be digging up all these plants and runners and transplanting them back into the straw. But the biggest disappointment is that only one, two, three asparagus still live of the original 16. Very disappointed, and they're awfully weak. So I think something got to them other than frost. If I had to guess, there's probably some burrowing animal. And so uh, unfortunately, this five year now ex experiment has really failed. Moving north, we have a bed full of peppers. I'm planting them nice and close. And this weather for the next 10 days is all 80 some degrees. So the tomatoes and peppers will really expand. After that is the bed of all the old random flowers that people would give us like Easter lilies and stuff that we put over there and they just grow wild. And then this is all tomatoes, tightly packed. I should say also that I am weeding every Wednesday and Saturday when I turn the compost. And I have one of those weeders now that's like a hoe with a blade on the bottom. Pew, and it just slices off the roots. It is so easy to do. That's why my beds are so darn clean. And it's not horribly laborious. It's really easy to do. I sat in this kind of tool for years and finally I took the plunge to buy one and I'm really happy I did. The frontmost bed this year, I've got four cauliflower, a bunch of ground cherries, trying that again for the first time in a couple years. And in between, I've got um, bush beans that all came up as volunteers. Half of them were transplanted to find the right spot. 
So this is an experiment in spacing, and we'll see how it goes. This is where my beautiful blackberry was, but I had to move it because of the fence, so it didn't entirely die, which I'm quite grateful for. This was my project, of course, last year, which took over all of the all the gardening. I rebuilt the fence, and it's quite magnificent. Check out those videos if you haven't. In addition to the ground cherries being something I haven't done in a few years, growing squash, summer squash, I haven't done in a few years. I had squash bugs a few years back that I couldn't get rid of. So one suggestion was to uh, not grow them for a few years. Hope any dormant babies just died. And I don't think I have anything. I really checked all of my seedlings that I got from the nursery to make sure there weren't bugs underneath them. So hopefully I didn't transplant any squash bugs into my garden and nobody around me is growing squash. So. And lastly, we took out the arched trellis. Uh, it completely died this winter, unfortunately. Because of that fall cleanup, I didn't get to do all of the uh, morning glories climbed up, and they made a mat, and the snow compacted it, and it completely destroyed it. So, But in happier news, the snap peas are, uh, you know, a foot or so tall, and they're growing well. The orchard is magnificent. I'm so happy that I have to shoot with the wide angle lens on to really try to get all of this in frame. This year, all of these got a proper pruning. You know, I put out a video on that too, uh, what I did end of April, middle of April, something like that. So they got, you know, their height chopped, they got any kind of suckers, any downward growth, dead branches, uh, thinned out the insides for airflow, you name it. And I've got two trees of my nine that are in full production. So, of course, my contender peach, my big guy, um, looking excellent. In fact, I'll probably thin out some of this peach blossom growth here. There's always more peaches than you need. Over here. One of my cherries is absolutely in full production. Everywhere you look in here. Cherries growing. Oh, yay. And all the other trees have a little bit of fruit, you know, maybe maybe a dozen blossoms or so, so we'll see what actually goes on. But this, the garden, or the orchard is seven years old now. Everything's between four and seven years old in here. Is that it? Or five and eight? God, time flies. Let's go with four and seven. And they're, they're, they're establishing, you know? It's a really satisfying feeling to finally be at this point. And now the big reveal. This is the flower garden we just put in. Ah, uh, this is the west side of our house, and this was a massive undertaking. Just uh, got the tiller out here nine days ago, and I still have yet to put in the limestone path, which will go around the border, but these are all perennials, except for that one random pot, of a wide variety blooming all throughout the season, different colors, different heights. Um, it was designed by our favorite master gardeners, Aunt Lynn and Uncle Jerry. Uh, so think more crawling on the ground in front and climbing in the back. I'll talk about some of the taller things. I've got one, two, three spikes of zebra grass. Those will be about seven feet tall. One of the towers is in. I've got a clematis on that. That's a climbing rose. It's a 10 footer, so it'll go up and then it'll waterfall down. And then over there, these two are an sweet autumn clematis so again another tower the spirea is a variety that grows about six foot that's a tree peony that'll be about four or five and the oak leaf hydrangea will be about the same so we'll have this really nice when this is mature another five years like tapering down from the house and it'll all fill in this will not be mulched you know, we'll just have this natural growth and greenery throughout the season. And it will really be akin to what became known as Phyllis's Garden on the other side of the house. Let's go look at that now. Named after my dearest neighbor right here, this is Phyllis's Garden. It's its second full year. Uh, we planted it two falls ago, so fall of 2021. And uh, it's looking great. I mean, just look at that. You see these plants are spaced about like what we had on the other side. And you can see the ground cover is, you know, as far as dirt is just going away. You know, the plants are growing naturally, filling in the space, spreading, multiplying. It's just 
it's just spectacular compared to what this was. Watch old videos. Check it out, you know. Um, in fact, from this garden, I was able to transplant some things into the new garden. Yay! It's all very exciting. So far, really, the only disappointment in this garden has been the clematis on this trellis. Now, this year, this particular one has already climbed higher than any of them last year, uh, as is its neighbor, right? Last year, they only made it to this line. And now here, these two are already up. These two are struggling a little bit. And I planted a climbing rose, same variety as the other side. It's supposed to be 10 feet tall, which would do most of the trellis. A little bit of an experiment to see how they grow in different bits of sun. These are rated for full sun, part sun. So we'll see what they like best. Gardening is fun when you experiment, right? But I'm super, 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 super pleased with Phyllis's garden. And this methodology of not using wood chips, just covering it with leaves in the fall and then helping all the seeds, you know, when the, well, when everything opens up, they just drop to the ground and make new plants. It's a good model. Lastly, I wanted to show you the pots in the front and our oldest garden. This here is our very first garden in the front of our house. Uh, we ripped out just a whole bunch of just overgrown Mughal pines eight or so years ago again, and I tilled it. And then these are plants all from my mother and my in-laws. And we just kind of put them in where we thought pretty. So it was less planned and I've been wood chipping it over the years. I think this year I want to rake out the chips so that these can naturally grow as well as Phyllis's garden and fill in. Um, a lot of these are smaller plants than they should be because over the years this tree has really grown rapidly and so it casts a lovely shade and it reaches much of the garden. So the tulips and daffodils do fine before the tree blooms but everything else has suffered. Most of these plants should be taller. That being said we had a lovely tulip and daffodil season. We've got some allium going. You can see an iris about to pop up those yellow button plants. The phlox will be going soon. And over here, yeah, we'll end with this particular one for the garden. This purple bearded iris opened up yesterday morning. Isn't it fantastic? This one, super tall. Wanna know why? Because it gets more sun, right? It's not under the crown of those trees. Window boxes are all planted geraniums and the vines, petunias in the front pots, vine. It'll just look lovely. Thanks for hanging out with me this morning in my little slice of Eden. Really excited about this area over here. Here's my centennial oak. I like to, after I'm done watering everything, you know, which takes half an hour or so, I'll be doing that until we get rainfall. I like to just stand here take a gander out and see all the work that we've done. This was a huge undertaking this year. The orchard's so mature, the garden's so mature. It's just a, it's a beautiful way to start the day when you get to look at that. Hope you have a great growing season. I'll keep you updated every hmm, week or so. And uh, let me know what you're growing, what you're doing new, and tell me what you think about my sweet new flower beds. Happy growing. I'll talk to you again. Bye guys.